I think my approach to like art is the same as like my approach to life where I go, okay, do I have something of value to offer into the situation? Oh, cool. I do. Okay, cool. Like, let me see how I, how I can do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I not have any value to offer? Okay. I'm not going to inject myself into the situation. Mm -hmm. And oh, do I know like another person that would be better, would be able to actually be more fitting? Yep. Okay. Yeah, definitely put them in there. I'm not going to try to just inject myself so I can yep. take this money and make this about me or mm -hmm. whatever. And I think when you approach life and work with where can I add value, then you find yourself in places where you can add value and you can add value in ways that you're like, man, I never even thought mm -hmm. that I could add this type of value with this like very humble thing that I do. Welcome to the Calgary Sessions. This is episode number 118. I'm your host, Jeff Humphreys. Uh, before we get into it today, I have a small ask. If you like this show or like previous episodes, I would love for you to share it with one friend. That's it. That's all. Uh, today's guest. This is going to be a really cool conversation because I love chatting with uh, characters like this this guy. Um, it was a quick recommendation from a previous guest, and then I, I'm like, okay, sounds cool. So I went and creeped him on Instagram. I was like, oh, shit. This is going to be really cool. So uh, please name, uh, sorry, name and who you are. Uh, I'm Alex Kwong. Uh, I am a, uh, an artist uh, out of Calgary, Alberta. When, um, when somebody asks you who you are, and I've had a couple artists on the show, is it a weird question to answer? Yeah, uh, actually, I was going to address that even in my in my intro. It's always <laughs> I'm on it's you. always <laughs> funny because I've like any time I do an interview, um, uh, I used to be like, oh yeah, like I'm a, I'm an artist and this and that, blah blah blah. But like a, um, a certain style of artist is that? Or would you go yeah, down or, that path? Or like visual artist yeah, or, yeah. or muralist or yeah. something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then, uh, and actually, uh, similarly to uh, Paul Hardy, when I was listening to that podcast, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm a human. Uh, mm -hmm. And then this is kind of like what I do. Mm -hmm. That's also kind of my uh, mm -hmm. my uh, approach as well. Yep. But I understand that it's like certain interviewers are not looking for these existential questions and, and, and all that, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, I try to not overthink it, yep. you know, try to go within the context, but yep. yeah, yeah. It's interesting too, because there's so many, like art's such an expansive area, right? And whether it's like a straight edge artist or a, like I said, muralist or, you know, there's there's so many labels, but as an artist, you guys kind of do whatever you want. So it's... Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> with uh, yeah, with like all all the labels and stuff, and you're trying to figure out like where where you fit in and mm -hmm. like where you can um, legitimately fit in mm -hmm. and like feel um, uh, you know uh, solid in being able to say like this is like this is what I am and yeah. I can and I can defend that and blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of don't care about any of that. I'm just a guy that's going around and doing stuff mm -hmm. and looking around and mm -hmm. and hanging around um, and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, you know, I try to, you know, approach it like that. I'm just somebody living life, yep. and sometimes the, you know, I make art about it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's, a, it's such a, uh, it's not a different way to go about it, but it is, right? Like, it's yeah. your way, yeah. which is awesome, but it's, I think I, that's the cool thing about the show, to have, you know, I have all sorts of people on, but to hear these different perspectives is what I find, like, really fascinating. Just, yeah. Because there, there's uh, these stories... They're such cool stories. So I'm glad Reese, shout out to Reese for, uh, for teeing this up. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Reese. Yeah. Yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, man, obviously I was, uh, I'm fascinated by your story start to finish. You know, your artwork is like, I dig it. Like it's your style, what you do and how you do it. Like it just, it's really cool. And I'm not an art connoisseur by any stretch, but what you're up to is just like, I feel it. It's cool. So yeah, man, take this thing back. Take it back oh, as far as you, you. want to go. Um, how you grew up, where you grew up, how your family inspired you, you know, how art creeped into your world, whether it's sport, you know, just like take it back as far as you want yeah. to go and then we'll get into it. All right. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I'm born and raised Calgary. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, like art's always kind of been a part of my life. Both my grandparents, both my uh, grandmothers were artists. Mm. Um, so, you know, the way I've kind of viewed it is that it was just kind of, Eventually, it was gonna kind of, it was gonna come to a head in 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 one of the one of the descendants or something, right? Yep. Uh, a lot of creative energy. So, um, where did they grow up? Uh, my 
on my dad's side, um, like in BC, um, Revelstoke yep. in Vancouver, uh, and then my mom's side out east in like Toronto okay. in that area. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, like drawing, like I was always drawing as a kid. Um, random things. <laughs> Dude, I'm on so, you, but I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not even sure if, uh, like, if if my mom remembers this, but but my mom would bring home uh, like the the um, I guess throwaway printer paper from her work, yeah. And so I just have these stacks of like you know just whatever the excess um, garbage, yeah. Uh, Printed, printed paper. Um, like how far back are we going? Are we going back to like those, like, remember the paper? With, how old are you? Uh, 35. So this is before, before you. I, have you ever seen like um, the paper yeah. with it, with that, with the perforated? The, yes. And all, yeah. the, all the circles down there. Like, yeah. <laughs> this might have been like the one right after that. One, <laughs> like one, one edition right <laughs> after <laughs> that. Um, but, uh, but sometimes they would have like her like company logo mm. on them. And, um, you know, like when I, like when I look back onto like those times and like my perception of the world, I thought everything was of like the utmost importance. Right. So when I would see like those logos, I'm like, oh man, I'm like, this is like important stuff. So I would draw like the logos for the companies that like my mm. parents worked at mm. and I would do weird stuff, like turn them into characters, mm. turn them into like superheroes or like no weird stuff. So it'd be like, they have the. Yeah, you know, like it'd be, or or like their head would be like my mom worked at Amico for a while. Would do like a Amico, it's like just the Amico logo <laughs> with, with a body or some, <laughs> something like just weird, weird stuff that I just you know like whatever just uh, it yeah. just came it just yeah. happened. Yeah, were you yeah. good? Like were you at, at, like talented from a young age? Do you think? Um, yeah, I think I, I had a knack for it. Yeah. Um, my my older brother was was the one that kind of got me into drawing. Mm. Um, my older brother pretty much got me into like anything that I was like interested in because it was like, he was kind of like who I was viewing the world through. Mm -hmm. um, Cause we were so close in age. He was maybe 14 yep. or maybe 16 months older than okay. me. Okay, so right there. Um, yeah, so, so he was like the one first drawing and then, um, and then I would just, then I just picked it up. Then he'd go to school and then I'm still at home. And so I'm like drawing like, you know, six hours a day or something mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah. was that. Yeah. It just started coming, coming yeah. out. Drawing and dinosaurs. Those were your jams. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought you had to know everything about dinosaurs. I thought it was like prerequisites to know about all these things. So mm -hmm. what was uh, your, um, <laughs> what was your investigation around dinosaurs? How'd that, how did that happen? Um, like, well, so, uh, movie or was it a cartoon or something? I don't really know. I think I think it was just naturally, um, yeah, like maybe like TV shows and stuff mm. like that. But then, uh, um, you know, and just and just seeing these, you know, these huge reptiles, you'd be like, man, this is this is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but my uh, so when my brother went off to school, and he comes back from school, he's like, you know, he can read because my brother picks up everything so fast. He's just such a smart guy that <laughs> he's reading, and I can't read, <laughs> and I'm just feeling like, oh man, I can't read, like. This life is going to be really hard, you know? And he's like, well, yeah, you got to learn how to read. <laughs> so out of like pure fear, I taught myself how to read. Um, I think in like, in like kindergarten or something. But then I'd start reading these dinosaur books and I'd start like making notes about like, okay, like this, this uh, dinosaur is in like the Jurassic period. And this one is like, you know, oh, and actually these movies from Jurassic Park, like mm -hmm. these dinosaurs didn't exist in the Jurassic era, blah, blah, blah like all, all this stuff. None of which I've ever used again. <laughs> no, <laughs> Very important to me at the time. Um, so yeah, so that was pretty much my life was just like mm. dinosaurs and, and drawing for for quite a while. And do you did your family like recognize the passion around drawing? Like, did they put you in scenarios to actually go explore it deeper, or is it just kind of when you had time to do it, you did it? Um, no, they uh, they definitely did. Um, and like, and same with my, my, uh, my grandparents, like my grandmothers, like they both, um, you know, we would, you know, play with crayons and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. like, um, I remember like my mom's mom, uh, showing me like Van Gogh and stuff mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, like look at this book and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's like so far beyond like what my understanding yep. is as a six year old. But you remember that though. Um, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so it was just like a very natural reality to my life. Um, and my parents would, they would say like, oh, do you want to go to like an art class or, you know, do this or that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I always knew that art was kind of like a very sacred thing to me. Mm -hmm. 
so I did not want to turn that into homework. Mm. You know, I was like, oh man, like I hate homework. I don't really like school too much. But, um, and so why would I want to do that to like this thing that's kind of, that's yep. kind of mine, right? Yep. Um, but I, but I did do a couple like art classes here and there, mm -hmm. um, which I found like kind of boring. Um, yeah, like I think I remember there was like one where like my mom put me in for like a summer camp or something. And I was just like, went to one class and I was like, ah, mom, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like they like, <clears throat> My family was like very, like definitely very supportive of all that. And like we had a very structured upbringing with, you know, activities and yeah. sports and, and, and all that stuff. Um, so I think, I think generally my, the, the whole thing in my family was just like, okay, we want everybody to be engaged in something yeah. and we'll foster that. Um, what do your parents do? Uh, my dad was a health and safety auditor, inspector. Yep. Um, and then my mom was a tax accountant. Mm. I, yeah. It's always, in, you know, I, I like to know because it's just, it's, it's so interesting how, you know, where your, how your background influences or doesn't influence yeah. your, your like trajectory. Yeah. And, and so because of that, <clears throat> I think um, they're like, we're just very practical people. Mm -hmm. So I was like kind of raised to have like a practical mindset mm -hmm. and being an artist did not seem practical at all. Mm -hmm. And so I pretty much never considered art being something to pursue as a career. Yep. So um, I always say like I pretty much spent my whole life trying to not be an artist because I had no point of reference of like, oh, this is like how it goes. This is like what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, every artist I was aware of was like, or or anybody that was like into art, like within my vicinity would be like, oh, well, they're just like a starving artist, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then any any artist of like art that you see is like, you know, almost like a superhero. It's yeah, like sure. so foreign mm -hmm. that you're like, yeah, somebody's somewhere, mm -hmm. but nobody around here mm -hmm. this is not how this goes, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, so I, so I pretty much, yeah, eventually put that on the, on the, mm -hmm. push that aside yeah. and, uh, and try to pursue other things. Um, so when you're a terribly. youngster, sorry, is it like, um, school is not your jam as you alluded to sport? Does that work into your, yeah, life yeah. At a young age. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I played a lot of soccer growing up. Yep. that was kind of my sport. Mm -hmm. um, and my like my family is like a big ski family. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the cold, so like that was kind of like mm -hmm. uh, you know. Force. <laughs> You're yeah. coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so a lot of a uh, lot of physical activity though. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of hiking, camping, um, like big trips like that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was like a very well-rounded and balanced uh, kind of breadth of experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Were they, um, I think they were like consciously making these decisions to expose you and your bro to, is it just two of you? Uh, no, I have uh, an older brother. Yeah. Like, yeah, like a year or so. And then uh, two years younger than me is my sister. Mm. And then two years younger than her is my youngest brother. Oh, so there's a crew. It's a big crew to lug around to do all <laughs> these activities. So it was like, yeah, like very regimented of like, okay, like we're getting up and you got to get all your stuff together and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Or, oh, if you have an activity that, um, you know, uh, conflicts with another schedule. Okay, you have to you have to carpool mm -hmm. with like other families mm -hmm. and this and that, and it's chaos. There's it it a lot of chaos. moving pieces. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of a lot of moving pieces. Yeah. Um, so as you're kind of coming through, like you know, elementary, junior high, is it just you know traditional? Like all these activities, doing school, arts, just kind of like there. Yeah. Um, as uh, I think, as as I got older, it kind of got pushed, got pushed to the side naturally. Um, because you know, sorry, because it, like not many people are doing it, or because you didn't see the what it could be. Uh, I think I think it was it was partly because not a lot of people are doing it. Um, also because I just didn't see that it like like as a practical thing. It was just like ah oh, man, I gotta yeah. you know um, like I'd look at like my teacher's notes like on my report card yes. or like year end card or yes. something like graduation <laughs> card, you know, I'd be like, Oh wow, Alex, you're very talented, <laughs> you know, but like, but then it'd be like other notes would be like, focus more on math. You know, <laughs> your math is a little low or like social studies or sciences yeah. or, or whatever. Right. So, um, so those seemed like real world things. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, man, I actually have to like mm -hmm. lean into this. Otherwise I'm going to be, I'm going to be a bum or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I think it just kind of naturally 
went aside, uh, except for like group projects. We'd be like, yo, group project, I got the title page, guys. Like, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do a banger for that, you know? Um, but yeah, it just, uh, yeah, kind of fell, fell by the wayside for the most part. Isn't it yeah. interesting though how you feel? Listen, I'm not an artist like you by any stretch. I was a creative person when I was a youngster. But it's amazing how when you're at, well, for me back then, it was like, there was never really a, like a force down a path, a creative path, you know? It was very, to your point, it's like social, D, math, F, English, D. And then you're like, okay, I need to put more energy into things I'm shitty at versus the yeah. reverse of that and be like, I'm a creative kid. Like, what other options are out there? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> uh, precisely. Um, the... Uh, yeah, it it is. Uh, I mean, a very very interesting and maybe very indicative of kind of where we are in mm. the world in like certain things where mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, just focus on all these things that are kind of uh, like not natural to you, yep. um, rather than yeah, build up on these uh, these gifts that you might have. Mm -hmm. um, and that's generally kind of how I live my life now. Is like I lean into like whatever I kind of um, naturally like flourish in, and yep. I find when I do that, then it bleeds into other things, and yep. those things become easier. But if you're just like waking up every day and you're like, oh man, I got to do this thing I'm not good at and yeah. I don't like, yeah. it starts to kind of define your life. And it's not like the best way to, to mm -hmm. go about it, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah. I need to get this D to a C. Yeah. 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 Like through just, just torture mm -hmm. as well, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, um, and, and like my, my marks weren't that bad. Yeah. I would just go through certain times where I just like, you know, if I just didn't get one thing and it was just things kind of compiled on it, I just really didn't get it right. But um, generally, like they were still, they were still fairly good. Yeah. Um, I just didn't really like doing it mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. you know? It's funny, dude. So last, last week I went and spoke at a grade nine class. <clears throat> and it was this creative writing class and I can't write, but the teacher just wanted me to come and talk about just a different way to look at creativity. I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. But what I did do is bring my grade nine report card. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, somet sometimes, you you know, a creative like me, I was horrible at school, dude. You know, someone like you, you could do both, which is a talent. Anyways, I show this report card to a bunch of grade nines, and it's literally, it's like math, my final math was 55. It was English was like 62 and social was 61. And it was ridiculous. So I send the, the report card around the class and they're all like, hmm. And they're all kind of confused. A, because I've never seen a mark out of 100 before. <laughs> <laughs> so that was confusing. And then A, how is this dummy actually standing in front of us? And he's like a productive human. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's amazing, you know, at, that, at, the, at a young age how... You know those those marks can impact you and like yeah. which way you go. Yeah, and and like man, if, like if I were to design a, like a school system that was like somewhat efficient, I'd probably have to design it exactly how it is, right? Because it's like you have to. It's like a communal thing that you're like, hey, we're teaching everybody. So what's like the biggest kind of broadest scope yeah. that we can do that fits the most people into? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and and otherwise it would just be so laborious to be like, okay, we have, we figured out that this kid is this way and we have mm -hmm. to teach him specifically to that. Mm -hmm. And this whole teacher's career is going to be focused to, you mm -hmm. know, teaching this one kid or, or whatever. But, um, but I also find that with kind of the, the way the school system is, it, it also creates enough pressure that for people that don't like it can like really push it, have something to push against, yep. kind of like a launch pad. And then you can kind of get out. Mm. Um, and, you know, like if you, if you need to live a, a different type of way, yep. it'll make you really earn it. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and then otherwise just fall in line and just go through the program and mm -hmm. just like kind of do, do your thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, keep going. Uh, junior high, high school, what do you, what's, um, what's got you going? Man, in, in junior high and high school, I'm just, man, I'm just kind of dicking around, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really doing much of, uh, much of anything of value, really. Um, and, uh, and, you know, kind of like that, um, that uh, I don't know, just like, like hearing about, oh, like what people are going to be doing and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you're going to go to university mm -hmm. and this and that, mm -hmm. trying to figure out your daunting future, right? Yep. Um, and, uh, and I always found that like incredibly daunting. Yeah, for sure. You know, like, okay, how do I, how do I do something respectable? How do I like, you know? Um, so, so I would, I would say those are kind of even like a little bit of like dark years of yeah. me just kind of not, um, 
not not being myself. Um, and uh, yeah, so so and I and I wasn't doing any art through that time. Mm-hmm. I think I did one one art class in high school and I failed it because I was just busy not going to class <laughs> doing that version of yeah. you <laughs> yeah yeah and i remember like i would see my art art teacher in the hallway on like a day that i skipped class mm-hmm. and and we'd i'd be like running away from him and he, i'd see it would be like a like one of those like detective shows in like the 80s where you see his like head pop up out of the crowd you're like oh <laughs> shit <laughs> you know um so yeah it, it was um you know, and, and like at that time, like I definitely, you know, like I knew that I had like decent talent um, yeah. that I was definitely taking for granted because yeah. I could like sit down and like draw something and kind of recreate a, a photograph decently well. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's kind of how I gauged gauged my skill level. It was like, okay, can I make this look like that? Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, <clears throat> but then after high school, like I pretty much didn't, um, like other than that course, like I didn't really do any art. Which is, um, which is fascinating to me, right? We like just for where yeah. you are, for where you are today, like yeah, and and like that's yeah, um, that kind of comes around into like an interesting, mm. like, like an interesting perspective on my on my own as well. Um, but uh, but so, but so so at, at this point, like my parents are like, okay, like what are you what are you gonna do? Which, which like, is, what are you gonna do? Which yeah. is a heavy question, right? Yeah, and yeah. as a creative human, yeah, a, a, you know, engineer, doctor, lawyer whatever yeah feels it doesn't feel like a thing yeah dark times and dude i yeah. you say dark times and i feel the exact same way about that period of my life yeah uh, yeah like so many so many people I have a lot in common with definitely do as well they're mm-hmm. like oh yeah man i know i know it was weird it was weird but at the time so go through it and it's yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's not fun going through it no when you're in it you're like it's like the uh it's like the corniest thing. Like when you look back on it, you look, oh man, what a cliche. I was like an angsty teenager. Whoa. <laughs> you know? Like, like, bro, yeah, dime a dozen, man. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but eventually, um, like, you know, and, and I'm trying to like figure out, okay, what should I do to uh, more or less like keep the world off my back too. Yeah. You know, and that includes my parents, you know, people's like opinion that for some reason matters to me and all, all this stuff yep. and like whatever. Um, so it was like a very exhausting period as well, right? Mm-hmm. So um, eventually um, I end up talking to like, kind of like this career counselor guy. I think my parents were just like, you can, we, we made an appointment for this guy that like one of our friends referred us to. Um, you sit down with this guy and you're going to figure something out. Because you were... Like when your parents were asking you what you want to do, you didn't have the answer. There, there was like a moment where I was like, oh, maybe I should go into law, like, because I kind of wanted to help people. I was like, maybe I could be a lawyer. And my dad would be like, oh, you want to argue for a living? And I'm like, yeah, shit, I don't know. <laughs> 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 you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it was just kind of like me just kind of saying stuff yeah. and just kind of seeing yeah. like, um, like how it sounded when I said, well, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, stick? Yeah, well, how do I think about that? Yeah. yeah. Um, but so I, I sit down, like talk talk with this guy. We do all these like personality tests and, and all this stuff, mm-hmm. and and, uh, and he gives me this list of Dude. these po- like potential jobs. Mm-hmm. And it's like number one is is you can be an artist. Number two is you could be an actor. Number three is you could be um, like maybe, maybe it was like a writer or something. Yep. And then number four was an architect. And I saw architect on there, and I was like. Okay, this is the only respectable thing on there. You can wear like a button-up shirt there, you know. Like no, nobody would have, nobody would be ashamed to introduce himself, or introduce me to their their old friends and family. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'll I'll do that. And and so he kind of sets me up like with um you know some university applications. Yeah. Um, and then I end up going to UVic, uh, to do kind of like a pre-architecture undergrad. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, well, you know, based on kind of um, you know, like this late application, um, you know, we can maybe squeeze you into like an easy program, which was art history. Um, which now I look back on it and like, it all seems like this grand design of these things that I kind of needed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I go into, go out, go out to Victoria. I'm not really taking school too seriously. And art history, um, courses, especially intro ones are, man, they're like, 
the driest thing ever. Because it's like, hey, this is the first time we found art, and this is art that was made like last year. And you have to remember all of it. Mm -hmm. And like your test will be like to say the date, place, medium, blah, 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 like whatever culture and, and, and this and that. So if like, if there's anything where you're questioning if you want to be in university and if you're doing the right thing, you're going to an art history course, <laughs> man, it'll tell you, man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Next, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so I kind of, I wasn't enjoying it too much for the first like couple of years. Um, but then once the course has kind of started to get um, a little bit more like honed in, mm -hmm. um, and I'm like focusing on like East Asian arts and architecture, um, but also like all, all these things like art history is basically a study of like religion, different religions and cultures throughout history, because that, those were the only people making art. Mm -hmm. It was all about making art towards your God and, and this and that, right? So, so I also got this like very, um, you know, kind of expansive uh, education in, in that stuff. Um, and so I got to the, got to the end of my degree, also did a, like a business minor is like to, to wrap up kind of like my last year. Mm. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> started going job shadowing at like architecture firms and hanging out with architects. Like buttoned up and walking in like. Yeah. I just like, I just walk up like, Hey man, can I hang out here? Mm -hmm. And then we're like, yeah, sure. I guess so. And then I get in there and they're like, bro, what are you doing? Don't be an architect. <laughs> this shit sucks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and so I take that into consideration. I'd think about like being back home in Calgary and like think about the architecture that was here at the time. And I mean, like, I don't want like not to like, you know, harp on my city, but I mean, it was not. It can be lacking. It was not very promising at that time, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like I think they had just started to build kind of cool buildings. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, the, the, one of the most groundbreaking buildings was the Chinook movie theater mm. with that was based off a B movie mm -hmm. based off Brendan Fraser's mummy. <laughs> I was like, man, <laughs> this, I can't do this. Here, no. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so then I had, I had one architect tell me, he's like, Hey, when you're doing your portfolio, just do creative stuff, just draw, sculpt, um, anything, just show that you're a creative person. Don't draw buildings. Don't pretend to be an architect. Mm. Um, so I really procrastinated on like, on getting into doing my portfolio. Yep. But then the first day that I kind of sat down and did it, it was like, I'm like doing, I think I was like doing a, um, I think I did like a portrait, like Mike Tyson or something. Just cause I'd like just watched the Tyson documentary awesome. and I was like, oh man, I'm just going to draw him while I watch the documentary or something like that. Um, and then it was like 12 hours went by and I didn't look up. Like I didn't take a break once and I, and I got to the end of that day and I was like, oh shit. I was like, I've spent all this time trying to not be an artist. Mm. And this is the only time I've been somewhere where I actually feel like I'm supposed to be yeah. doing this, yeah. you know, like really aligned. So it was like, it was a very inspiring time or a very inspiring moment, but it was also at the same time, it was like, bro, this is, this life is going to be a rough go, man. Because you, you were know? graduated, you had your yeah. I was graduated, so, had my had my degree and stuff. So like the pat, you were should be on this like straight trajectory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then I ended up like putting my, putting together just like the weakest portfolio ever, and just kind of putting it in with like a cover letter, like hey, I could. What you, here's an application. If you want to have me, I'll take that as a sign, I guess. But like you know, and you know, I got a rejection letter, and it was like whatever. I didn't even notice because I was just by that point, I was just drawing like. 20 hours a day. And wh what were you drawing? Like, where were you finding your, like, the inspiration to draw? That's what I find fascinating. It's just like, you know, how do you look at the world and how do you, how do you zero in on what it is you want to draw? Um, that, that was like a, that was like a difficult thing. Cause I was, I was trying to figure out, um, it, it was so many things all kind of like flowing through at the same time where, mm. um, I'm like learning about like, you know, I'm like, playing with watercolor. And then I'm just ex excited about what, the way the paint moves. So I'm like, whoa, this is just cool on, all on its own. But how do I figure out if this is good or not? So mm -hmm. then I'm trying to recreate photographs because that was like the easiest way for me to know. Your check. Like if this is, yeah, if this, if this looks like that, then good. You know, like I can't run, a, run my own artistic critique mm -hmm. by myself in, in uh, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so I just started like really just recreating like black and white photography and like charcoal mm -hmm. and doing, doing stuff like that. Um, and all, all types of photography or were you kind of like, 
Uh, mostly, mostly portrait stuff, okay. and like going, like trying to trying to go as like hyper real as possible, um, and uh, you know, and, and I'd like I'd work on multiple drawings at a time, and someone would be like six months of me just drawing, um, and then so so at that time, like basically my life was like go to the gym, mm -hmm. and then draw, and then draw until like five in the morning, mm -hmm. and then try to sleep. But then my brain would just be going and just going. Mm. So I wouldn't get any sleep. So then I'd be like, well, I better go to the gym and just maybe I can exhaust myself. And it, it was like that for maybe like three or four months. Mm. Um, were you working at all? No, at this time, like I, I wasn't working. So you were just like... I was just like straight, like I was just doing that. Um, actually, oh no, I, I, I was working as a bouncer through that time. Like just like a few times a week. So weird, right? Oh, like yeah. these different different versions of yourself same person yeah. but different versions yeah 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 so weird and and like i'm sure it was like very bizarre for like everybody around me to like watch me kind of like go through this mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. like i think everybody's perception of like an like a an, an artistic person was definitely not me yeah you know i'm just like the big gym dude yeah stack guy <laughs> yeah I'm like go draw for 20 yeah, hours yeah. yeah i'm just been drawing this flower for the past 18 hours man <laughs> <laughs> How'd you spend your day? <laughs> yeah. When you're kind of, you know, that that amount of energy toward it over that time period, like all in, you know, like passionate, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, addicted to it almost. What's your, what's your like family saying as they're watching you kind of find yourself? Yeah, um, I like... I mean, I don't know if I've like ever a actually asked them specifically to like, yeah. hey, like, can you think back you to that? Think? What was that like? Yeah. Um, generally, what I got was uh, they were just glad to see me finally actually engaged in with something, mm. you know. Um, so, so and, and it was it was like pretty cool. It was like definitely brought a lot of positivity into my life. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Around like how how so just. Um, I think, uh, I think I just was, was like hit with this idea that, okay, anything is possible and I, and I'm, I can do this and, and okay, look how rapidly I'm progressing. Mm. So, um, so then I also kind of feel like, uh, like it was just, oh, I was always supposed to be doing this anyway. So I just kind of like picked up onto this like moving track that was kind of going on in the background mm -hmm. and it was just yanked me along mm. and I was like, okay, yeah, we're making up for a lot of lost years. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and it did feel like that, just crammed in. And it, it was also very difficult to, uh, to kind of handle, even like mentally. Yeah. Because uh, it was just like so much, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm like really lucky that I was like, uh, like I was still playing soccer at the time yeah. as well um, and, and going to the gym. And I think if I hadn't, um, I think I would have been kind of like yeah. really kind of like lost, yeah. lost in all that. Because yeah, you needed... Um, to kind of balance it out with a little bit of structure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but there'd be times where I'm like, you know, like, oh man, I didn't even go outside for a week. <laughs> like it was like, yeah, it's like it was next level of yeah. yeah, that, yeah. You know, I'm struggling to find the word for it, like dedication. Like, what? How do you describe that time period? Um, it, it was, it was like a fifty percent, like, uh, like really, really positive thing, but also like fifty percent grueling. Um, Almost like a, like a, like a fight preparation or something, mm. you know? Mm. Um, because I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it to the max of like my capability, yeah. you know? And, and generally my, my, um, my only f like, I guess, goal about it was like, all I want is to be able to be in a room of like my peers, of, of other artists that I that I respect, and at least just to be able to have like a conversation, mm. and then be like, okay, yeah, I kind of I see what you're doing, and, and I respect it. Like I never expected mm. to be able to, you know, stand side by side with like anybody. I was like, I just want people to know that I'm kind of like I want to be involved in some small humble way, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I was just kind of preparing. I, th I think I was kind of preparing like with, with that in mind. Mm. Um, and also with just like kind of like a very unhealthy uh, level of perfectionism too, mm. you know? Um, so it was always like uh, I had to somewhat kind of talk to myself about that. Like, okay, okay, you know, okay, this is how you can cope with the fact that this drawing is the way it is right now. <laughs> you know, because mm. I just stay up at night, like just like thinking, right? For those like few hours I was supposed to be sleeping. You. 
Yeah. Uh, and I figured out ways to like, um, like if I went to bed after I finished a drawing, yep. I couldn't go to bed. Yep. So I'd have to finish a drawing and then I have to start another one. Um, and then be like, you know, 25% the way through yep. and then go to bed. Because if I finished a drawing and it turned out good, or if it turned out bad, I'd be so emotional mm -hmm. that I couldn't sleep. Mm. And I'd be so, yeah, just jazzed up. So the, um, this is a like fascinating time in your life, hey? Yeah. Like self-discovery yeah. and, and... Yeah, yeah. And, and, and through like, like I think drawing also taught me a lot, like uh, even just uh, spiritually, mm -hmm. um, because it was pretty much just, it's just you and the paper, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so if you, if you look at even drawing like your life, um, every, every, everything on the page is what you put there. Yep. You know, yep. it's not like, ah, oh, shit, man, like, where'd that come from? It's mm -hmm. like, no, you put it there. Mm -hmm. So you have to be thoughtful, um, you know? And, and so with, with drawing, it's like with drawing, painting, whatever, um, you can go like, it's a hundred percent yours. Yeah. Uh, which I then applied to life, like, okay, well, in life, it's only like 50% yours because then there's like the other 50% of, you know, uh, the response to you with other mm -hmm. people and blah, 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 blah. So I was like, okay, well, I can at least look after my 50% like very well mm -hmm. or as, as best as I can and like yep. ever, ever expanding, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I was like also growing a lot as a human at the time. Um, oh, just and all kind of um, like self-guided or are you, are you picking up cues from like, I don't know, different individuals, books. Like, was there, was there just like you, like really dig it into your head? Yeah, it was just me. Crazy. And I didn't know anybody. I didn't know any artists. Like, um, I had met, uh, I had met David Brunning, mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our mutual friend. And at that time, like I had drawn like some watercolor stuff. There was like some landscapes mm -hmm. and, uh, and I knew a guy that knew him and he was doing the, he was doing, uh, the, the haircutting, like the barbershop thing oh, yeah. out of his apartment of his, at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I like, so I was like, oh man, I got to start like meeting people and like figuring out like, you know, something. I can't just like keep doing this alone in a, you know, mm -hmm. behind closed doors. Um, so, uh, so I, uh, let my hair grow out for like a couple of weeks or something. And I was like, yo man, I called my buddy. I'm like, yo man, take me down to Dave's place for a haircut. So I go down there meet him and kind of show him like some photos of my art. And it's man, I mean, it was shit. It was shit oh, yeah. paintings, right? Yeah. And, uh, and he kind of looks at him, he's like, oh yeah, cool, man. Um, yeah, keep it up, like whatever. And I was like, oh. Noted. Okay. <laughs> so I go home and I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, never again in my life am I going to allow somebody to respond to me with manners, you know? Mm. And then, so I just was like, boom, okay. Like I picked, I think I picked out like a few photos and I was like, I'm just going to recreate these photos and like just really dive in. Um, and so, and by using the just black and white photos, it was like kind of easy to like uh, develop mm -hmm. um, just just kind of by myself, yeah. just like be kind of teaching myself uh, um, the uh, the process. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like kind of be like, oh, why can't I achieve this here? Okay, this seems like I could maybe use like this kind of tool or something. Mm -hmm. And then I go to the art store and I'd be like, yo, shit, this tool looks like exactly like something I would need. And then I buy that and then like I'd use that. And then later on I'd find like, you know, I'd see like some other artists on Instagram using one. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm using that. Right. Okay, cool. You know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it, so it was just like really just kind of me, mm -hmm. me against me trying to like figure, figure it all mm -hmm. out. Right. And then even when I did meet other artists, like they weren't, I wasn't really yeah, doing yeah. anything that they were doing yep. and, and vice versa. So. Did you, um, were you comfortable with that? Like being like self-guided or did you, did you ever give thought to like, I wonder if I, you know, is there people that can help me or am I just, this is all me? Um, I think it, sa it sounds like, um, it sounds stressful. <laughs> like for me, for me to like <laughs> sit and hear this, I'm just like, dude, it, it oh, sounds yeah. like you're pinned. Yeah, dude. Oh, dude, it was it was chaos, man. Mm -hmm. It was it was chaos. But there was just like such a it was like such a fire going. Yeah. Um. I I had thought about like okay, man. Eventually, I should like um reach out and like learn some learn some stuff, find a workshop or something. Yeah. Um. But I also felt so inadequate in mm -hmm. my ability mm -hmm. that I was like, ah, no, I got a I got a I got yeah. a lot to learn before I can show my face mm -hmm. to to um. Mm -hmm you know, like a class or, or, or something like that. Which is interesting Interesting because I feel like um, a like self-awareness piece of like, mm, I don't got this yet. 
I, yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to stay quiet, be yeah. humble, yeah. You know, like play in the shadows here. Yeah. It's a different approach because there's a lot of loud people out there. Definitely. <laughs> you know definitely. I mean? like, yeah. Yeah. You, what, and, and, and I thought like when I would see those loud people, I'm like, oh man, these guys, <laughs> these, these guys like know exactly what they're doing so they can be that loud. Mm-hmm. And like, I can't be that loud. Mm-hmm. I can't, I have, I have a lot to learn. I have a lot to learn. And so, and when I'd see like murals and stuff painted on the, like on the sides of buildings and stuff, I thought that they were freehanding everything. So I was like, man, How? the pr- just the base level knowledge, I don't even have that to be able to even get proportions right at all, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I was just like rigorously practicing. And I didn't like, I would just kind of freehand everything. I would just, I would look at a photo on my phone and I just draw from it, you know? And like, I would get closer and closer and closer and be good, you know? But I didn't know anything about, I thought that was just like basics mm. you had to do. Um, and and that definitely like slowed I think a lot of my process up, um, but now it's like it's a lot uh, stronger of a foundation mm-hmm. that I have that mm-hmm. um, because then I to go meet other people and like man we project this stuff <laughs> we don't we don't freehand this mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but it's allowed me to be in um, in situations where I'm like oh man I you know this is like a weird um, space yep. I have to freehand like this whole thing yep. I have to like make it up and fill it in mm-hmm. um, you know. And it, Saves me a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of headache. So, so the uh, torture is helping you. The torture paid <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it Dude, gives it, and it gives me great comfort now that I'm like, okay, so I'm, like, it was I'm worth ready it. for it. Yeah, because it sounds yeah. like hell, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it was definitely like a, um, kind of like a self prescribed yep. hell and like discomfort. Yeah. So, <clears throat> how did you? Sorry, um, how did you manage the? That kind of peer pressure when you're looking around at your peers and you're watching them either like, I don't know, put on a suit or buy a car or just like, you know, these like whatever these benchmarks are that society deems as proper. Yeah. How do you manage that when you're kind of, you're in the, you're in, you're in this state and I'm sure you have characters in your life that were like, yeah, man, I'm sitting in a cube. I'm getting paid big money. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was always uh, like a very, uh, a very interesting thing. Like I didn't have too much time to even think about it, but like, I did like think about it. Like it, I did notice it because I like go out with my friends or whatever, and mm. they'd be like, "Yeah, man, like I'm, you know, I'm I'm buying a house, mm. or like I'm getting married," mm. and I'm like, "Oh man, what's that like?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> I had to leave my house to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but uh, but it like, but also I think because it was like kind of. Um, uh, Paired with like a bit of like a a, a, a spiritual development as mm-hmm. well, I was like somewhat okay. Yeah, um, and you know, was that spiritual like the spirituality piece? Was it always there? Uh, I think so. Yeah, like I I used to like journal a lot, mm-hmm. um, and like a lot of a lot of these things would come through like in in journaling, um, but never like it would always it would be more like philosophizing. You know, I'd be like, oh, like, like, what is the body? Is it just a vehicle so that the soul can interact with one another? I'm mm-hmm. like 15 years old mm-hmm. writing this but, stuff outside. Like, <laughs> but like thinking differently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, so ultimately, like a lot of those things, like um, they like didn't really matter to me as much. Yep. I mean, like definitely like like very nice and like, um, you know, great, uh, like, um, um, you know, like, points to reach in your life yeah, and proud, you know, things to celebrate and all, yeah, yeah. All, all that. Um, but I was just like, oh man, I was like, my path is so weird. <laughs> We're just doing this. And it was like, eh, whatever, you know? You embraced it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, like there would definitely be times where I'd go like, it, actually after a while it would be like, I would have kind of like a like a breakdown every like three months or so, mm. or every couple, couple, like few weeks maybe. And I go, man, what am I doing, bro? <laughs> What am I doing? Like, mm-hmm. this is not, like, am I going to do this for my entire life? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just kind of like write down my thoughts. And then I'm going to like wake up the next day and feel fine. That's <laughs> and it. Go right like, back it, to it. And it's all, you You have the ability to manage yourself. Uh, I don't know if it's like, if it's me. I generally feel like uh, like there's always been something that's working on my behalf. Mm. And it's like kind of like looking out for me. Yep. So, But even that, um, that example of like being able to write it out, and then literally yeah. reset the next morning. Yeah, versus but, yeah, it's it's like um, like what do they call it? like intuitive journaling. Mm. So uh, and I always like recommend that to other people that mm. I like kind of uh, see like a similar kind of 
path in them or or, uh, or that they're at a similar space that I was in. Yep. Um, you know, you just kind of start writing. Where you you can even start by being like, I don't even know what to write right now. Mm-hmm. By the time you get to that end, end of the sentence, it's like, because I don't know what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> and away we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. Um, but uh, but I noticed like once I started doing that, like more dedicated like uh, journaling, mm-hmm. you know, those things kind of went away. Yep. Um, and I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm just like building this, uh, you know, this life and career as as an artist. At the time, it was like, that was like the whole goal, build, li- build my career as an artist mm. and try to create some type of value, um, be able to offer value as like a person, yep. you know, because that was kind of like my my perception of, uh, of what a successful person in society mm. is, right? Yep. Um, you know, just has, has something to offer. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's, I, I, um, I don't feel tense, but I feel like the, 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 uh, whatever you were working through, it just very intense. Very, very intense. Yeah, yeah. But don't worry, it gets way better. What, dude, it gets way just, better. I, you're you're <laughs> smiling, you're happy, your art's bananas. Like, <laughs> it's way better. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. So, walk it through. So, you're still, you know, you're being humble. You're not really showing anything to anybody. So, yeah. Um, but then, uh, and, and so this is like the cool thing about Calgary is that, um, it's kind of like Calgary's like double-edged sword is like, um, or at least Calgary in the time, at that time, is you can just say that you're something in Calgary and people just go, all right, you know, dude. I can be like, yo, I'm a mime. And people are like, cool, man. Dude, he's, yo, did you hear about Alex? Like, he, that, he, that guy's the mime. Um, <laughs> and then, and then it's just kind of up to you whether or not like you kind of like give people a reason to believe it and yep. like with, uh, you know, um, you know, and, and that it's like something genuine. So, um, so I just became this art, this everybody's artist friend, basically, right? Mm. Um, and then, uh, but the other thing in Calgary is like, and I think this is probably like everywhere that if uh, if you do one kind of art, you do all kinds of art. So people just kind of go like, "Hey, man, can you do this? Hey, can you do this?" So all of a sudden, you just have all these random opportunities, um, and so because I was like in this space where I'm like, man, I'm trying to build this and I got to like learn how to do all this stuff. And, uh, I would just say yes to everything unless I physically couldn't be there. Yep. Um, and what that allowed for me was, it wasn't that I was like prepared for them at all. Um, that allowed me to like completely shatter my comfort zone mm. because I didn't, um, man, I didn't know how to do shit, dude. Like mm. I got, I got off. <laughs> Man, I got offered to... Uh, These are all like, uh, sorry, like opportunities from close friends, like right in your circle? Uh, or people like uh, um, How'd they referring know? me. How'd they know what you're up to? Were you showing people? Uh, well, you're... I had like Instagram, okay. um, you know, like posting on the social media and okay. stuff. Um, but I think it's just like, there was like so few artists in Calgary. It's yeah. like, as soon as you post something, it just like gets around so yeah. quick. Especially like with Instagram back then, hashtags worked. Social media like was effective For sure. without having to, having to pay. Especially when you're talented dude and you start yeah. posting oh, right you're like <laughs> well, this is get some attention yeah. yeah it's like bro it's like 17 <laughs> likes baby i got this <laughs> yeah um yeah so so it was like uh yeah like a lot of people were just kind of like referring me to, cool. to all, all for all these things and man I, like like i would go into some of these things totally unprepared mm. just because like i didn't know like you know because i was used to doing it like alone in my house mm-hmm. you know um and uh, and I had this this gig at like uh, at a store in Calgary to paint portraits of people that were like purchasing things, um, and uh, and I was like I was like yeah okay cool well it's gonna be like this much like yeah okay five hours on Saturday five hours on Sunday um, and I was like yeah okay cool um, and I'd never drawn live before I'd only ever drawn kind of in the privacy and the safety of like mm-hmm. my own my mm-hmm. own home. Um, so I go down there and I'm like setting up and, uh, and like I'm going from like 12 to five every day and I'm like setting up and some lady and her husband come by and they're like, Hey, um, what's, uh, what's going on here? I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be doing portraits and stuff. And you know, for, for people, if like they, you know, if they made a purchase, um, so she's like, Oh, I made a purchase. Like, can I, can I have my portrait done? I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, I've just walked in the door like three minutes prior. Uh, and she sits down and I just 
I mean, I strike out three times, just like terribly, terribly. And she just gets up and she leaves. Uh, and her husband kind of looks at me with pity, just like, oh, man, I don't even know if this guy even is supposed to be here, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I look at the clock and it's like 11.57. And I'm like, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> and this is the first day. And like that kind of anxiety is the kind of anxiety that people talk about that keeps you up at night mm -hmm. when you're imagining a worst case scenario mm -hmm. in your mind. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing that in the middle of this store. Live. Live. <laughs> yeah, real time. <laughs> you know, just like, okay, keep a straight face, but just pick up the pieces deep down <laughs> in your soul here. <laughs> that was embarrassing. And you can't, like, like, what do you do? Like, what do you do? You're going to do that for five hours? What if, like, hundreds and hundreds of people come through here. You're going to fail hundreds and hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. Like who, who knows how bad this is going to go. So, uh, so I had to kind of like meditate, like right there in the middle of the store. Just like go to... Yeah. And just be like, okay, well, what do I know? Well, I've made proper marks on a paper before. I didn't make them that time, but maybe if I just take some more time and like think about it and keep it simple, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I kind of, this is how I like, I always like envision hitting rock bottom that you smash on the ground and everything you're carrying is shattered and then just kind of like your gooey self you just kind of get up and you're like what the fuck <laughs> and then you go oh shit okay i need that like i need my wallet i need this and you pick up the things you kind of need and then you just kind of go like Whoof, and you carry on but everything else kind of gets left behind you kind of you know you get mm -hmm. to you get to shake that right um <clears throat> So that's kind of what happened to me in the middle of this store, unbeknownst to everybody <laughs> around me. This is what I'm going through internally. You've turned to goo man. Yeah, yeah, internally. yeah. And, uh, and then like the next people come up and like, and I'm just kind of like meditating my way through this and, you know, and, and it goes better and, you know, I'm keeping it simple. Um, you know, like they weren't like the most, uh, like they were just like, you know, 30 second sketches, just, you know, yeah. but, um, but it got better. And then I had people like lining up again and I do, you know, like having cool interactions with people and, and it actually turned out great. Mm. Um, and I've had like multiple uh, situations like that. Um, and I'd also say that's also due to like the way I was raised is that like my parents, like, no matter how bad I did not want to finish things, they'd always be like, you have to, you have to finish everything. Mm. Um, so, uh, so like that kind of like really just took everything that, uh, you know, that I kind of, all of my preparation up yeah. until that point, right? Yeah, you used it. Um, yeah, so so after like multiple kind of situations like that, it's like then you don't even have a comfort zone. You're just kind of like walking around free, mm. you know. It's like you've already experienced humiliation, mm -hmm. even if it was just like on the inside, like secretly or whatever. And then and then you kind of get to like free yourself from all that mm. all that stuff, and, and you get to kind of move a little differently. Yep. Yeah, you just you have a different vibe, like you. You're walking a little more upright. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And like something can happen, like you're like when people are like, man, you must be freaking out right now, and you're like, damn, that man, seems like another day. Yeah, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> yeah, that um, without those experiences, you know, without like to have that, did you feel like you were ready for that? These tests. Um. I think like bare bones ready, mm. like, you know, like I, like, I don't know if I necessarily had like the extra tools to like really finesse it, mm -hmm. but I think I had like the, the bare bones of what I needed to kind of like move, mm. move forward with them. Um, you know, and, uh, because yeah, like it would just be in, like, I'd be putting, put, I put myself in so many situations where I'm like, I have no business being here. Um, and I just go, okay, step by step, little bit by little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh. And I, and I noticed that like things would just kind of like work out like that yeah. as long as, as long as I put myself out there kind of like with uh, with like good intentions and, yeah. and faith and like mm -hmm. humility mm -hmm. it would kind of it would kind of work out. If you don't lead with those three things, oh, you get smited, my friend. <laughs> and you and, get humbled. Yeah, you know, like I think it was like I don't know if it was Mike Tyson that said it, but he was like, uh, um, "Be humble, like in life, or life will humble you." Mm. Man, life will humble you. Mm. Have you, uh, is that experience talking or like, you, you, you know, from the outside, you sound like a grounded human, but have you caught yourself in occasion being like, oh yeah. Shooting above your pay grade? Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. Like, I think it's just natural, right? Like, yeah. um, I think more so like in my earlier, like earlier in my career when I was like 
when I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe I do kind of got this, you know? And then, uh, and then you just goes, you, you know, you experience something or see somebody else's work or see somebody else's like practice and you're like, oh, man, what am I, what am I bragging about? Mm. Like, I can't, you know, like they, if I bragged about this in that room, they would be like, dude, who's this annoying little bug? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, I, I like, you know, I, I definitely like take certain pride in like some, uh, some, you know, like my, my projects or like things I've been able to do. Yeah. Um, and like, I would say more, like more joy than like so much like pride. Yeah. Um, but I find like with that, then it like, it keeps, it's like very enriching and it keeps coming mm-hmm. rather than like me having to like pop off at the mouth yeah. trying to tell people yeah, like for sure. why. Yeah. How do you, um, you seem like you're very like thoughtful and mindful. Is it, is it um, a natural thing or is this something that you've, like working at or just you've always had it? Um, I think, um, I think it, like there's always been an aspect of it uh, to me, but um, but it's become kind of like my main focus in my life mm. in the past, like since COVID. Because um, leading up to COVID was like kind of like me white knuckling onto my life. Because um, I'd, been, I'd been working so much yep. and I would just like, like my my uh, my general schedule, like through the summer, would be like go to a project at like you know maybe like six in the morning, or go to the studio at like six in the morning. Yep. Um, paint for a few hours. Go to a go to a construction site where I'm like painting a mural. Paint until um, paint until the restaurant that I'm painting closes for the night, and then go there and then paint overnight, and then at like seven in the morning. I would like take a nap at the restaurant and then I'd go back to the studio or something and like, and I would just kind of do that. And I was like, yeah, man, we're making, we're, we're making things matter. Mm-hmm. You know, we're showing people that you could like take things seriously and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And you're going to be so fulfilled after this. Um, and then I got to the end of that and like, uh, definitely like affected relationships in my life, yep. uh, affected my relationship with myself. So like by the time I got to the end of like one of those years, I was just like riddled with anxiety. Of just like I would get like an email, like, hey, Alex, like we'd like to talk to you about a project, and I go, Ugh! Mm-hmm. and I wouldn't be able to like leave my apartment for like three days or something. Was it a quick ramp up to to get to that point where <clears throat> to that? Um, like from it, from like those thirty second sketches in that spot to like, yeah, keep, they, this is this is probably all over the span of like maybe like eight years. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, some. Yeah, seven, seven, eight years or so. Yeah. Um, so then, so then I was just like, oh man, maybe I need to work harder to get rid of this anxiety. Uh, so I would just work harder if I could. But then eventually, it got to a point where it was just like I had so much anxiety I couldn't even work. And the anxiety around um, just not delivering to the. I don't even know what it was from. Mm, just anxious. Yeah, it was just like like I would just always be. I was always operating like 60% anxiety, mm. you know. Sometimes I just be like be out and about and I go, Whoa. I just can't be out anymore. And I just have to like go home, mm. walk home. Mm. Or, I'd have to, or I'd have to go sit in my car because I couldn't drive because mm. I'd just be so anxious. And traffic is the worst for anxiety. Mm. So, um, so yeah, so I had to like put in all these like practices because like eventually I couldn't like work anymore. Um, so I just kind of stopped doing all my projects. So I started saying no to everything, like wrapped up the, like the last few. Yep. Um, and then, uh, and then I just started doing kind of like a self care routine of like meditation, journaling, all the stuff. Yep. Um, and then, uh, you know, that kind of eventually kind of took hold and it just kind of, you know, I started to like released, released all that anxiety out of my life. Yeah. Um, and through those practices, like I haven't, I haven't had anxiety since I'm mm. able to kind of, you know, operate, uh, um, without it becoming, um, you know, part of my life. Yeah. But because I've experienced to that level, I'm like, shit, anything I see that I'm like, you know, this is not helpful. I'm like, like you don't get space mm. in my life, whether that's like people yep. or, um, just, you know, activities or just like whatever, yep. um, yeah, it just kind of gets projects. no play for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like projects, like, um, like my my main rule is like I try to only do projects with people I'll be grateful to mm-hmm. work with, mm-hmm. and that will be grateful to work with me. Yeah. Um, 
because yeah, otherwise it's like, yeah, you know, like my, my life is so intertwined with my, with my work that I'm like, oh mm -hmm. man, I can't, mm -hmm. I'm not spending my life yeah. with, uh, with certain people. Yeah. So, yeah. um, COVID, what happens around COVID? Um, COVID was, I mean, so, so when everything shut down, I was like, well, okay, this is weird. But also I was like, this feels like what I, like, I've always been doing this. My whole life's been a lockdown since I've been trying, just mm -hmm. drawing and painting. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was just kind of good for me because I didn't feel like the world was leaving me behind. Yeah. I felt like, uh, I heard somebody else put it like, it was like a home game for artists. You know, we're like, man, we were already here. Mm -hmm. We've been preparing for this mm -hmm. our whole lives. Right. So, um, so yeah, I was just like painting and drawing the whole time. Um, but it was, I was still kind of having, I was still having that issue with anxiety. Yeah. So, um, so eventually, uh, I, and I was still able to work like a decent amount through COVID. So mm -hmm. like it wasn't really, it wasn't like really an issue that way. Yep. Um, but just like when I, when I, yeah, when I started dealing with, uh, you know, anxiety through mm -hmm. like meditation and, and, and all these different practices, I just kind of, it was almost like I was able to use COVID to redirect my life in a different, different way mm. and just be like, okay, hey, well, we don't go back to things pre-COVID. We just, we just go forward, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's like certain things, you just like, it's kind of like a ruthless, like, no, you're just kind of gone. Yep. You're just kind of gone. Yep. I got to, you know, don't do that anymore. Yep. Um, and, uh, and it just like allows for, I mean, it kind of made me, I follow all those things I learned through COVID like yep. now, you know, um, and it allows me to like have this like really beautiful career mm -hmm. and just like a beautiful life too. Um, How'd you figure? How'd you figure all this out? How'd you figure out how to like manage yourself? You know, some some people there's a, there's a bunch of different solutions, and some people either have success with them or some don't. Right? For you to just it's, it seems like a constant theme. Like wind it back into your own head, come up with a solution, do a bunch of work, move yeah. on. Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's it's different. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of man, a lot of my stuff comes through like through meditation. Like I kind of channel a lot of uh, a lot of things. Like even even through like the journaling. Yeah. Like I'll think I'm writing something and then I read it back and I'm like I don't even remember writing that. Mm. And then it's like uh, you know, I'll be like, oh, look at right there. Oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Mm. Um, so uh, so through that, like through meditation, journaling. Um, but it's, it's like self guided, right? You, yeah. You come up like, with your own program. Yeah, through stillness. Like I, like I, I used to, I used to stay in motion all the time, which is why you're like, man, I'm getting tense listening to what your life was like. I was always like, man, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And I've had, I've had people tell me they're like, oh man, like being around you at certain times, like being around a supercomputer mm. where we're just like, we're like, oh, chill out, mm. you know, um, which, you know, not, not so much now, but like. No, not at all now. Yeah. <laughs> from, yeah. from the minute you rolled in, yeah. you're like, eh, yeah. this, this would <laughs> yeah. be nice. This would yeah. be, yeah. be chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it, but it's definitely like through through stillness. Mm -hmm. So um, so I always kind of I have a practice where it's like you know like I meditate in the morning. Um, I kind of find that stillness. I find that stillness to like by myself to find out like what's mine, mm -hmm. you know. And because I spend so much time alone, like I really become like hyper aware of like what's mine yeah. and what's not mine. So then when when uh, when I go into a project, when I go into a meeting, when I you know go into anywhere. I'm trying to come from stillness and silence and go into that and then come back to that. Mm. Um, because then if I, like if I go to that and then I go to something else, yep. then I'm like, I get kind of like, oh yep. shit, I don't know if this is that or this is the, whatever. Mm. But if I come back, then I can like kind of, you know, release Center. it again and go, yep. okay, yeah, this was, this was this in this way and this is how I experienced it and blah, 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 mm. you know? Um, so that's always been like the huge thing for me and definitely, um, it's a terrible business plan, but that's how I run my business. Like I'll go to like, I'll go to a meeting and I'll be like, you know, I can meet the people and, you know, um, and then I go home and I go, all right, what do I think about that? Or I just like wait yeah. or I meditate and I just ask, I'm like, okay, yeah. should I work with these people? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I go against it and they're like, bro, oh, you weren't supposed to do that. And I'm like, I know now I'm in the middle of the project and I know that. It bit you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's, uh, it really is a lot of, um, yeah, just that whole meditative process. Mm. Yeah. I find it, uh, just to be able to, to understand that's what you need. 
that's a like that's a um, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just it's a very mindful, thoughtful approach, like self, yeah. like self focused or self guided. Yeah, and it's it's not. Um, it's a hard thing to try to like relate to other people in a way that it would be something that they would adopt, um, you know. So like when I talk to people about it, like I'm like, oh, I don't expect you to live mm. your life the way that mm. I live my life, but I'll talk to you about how I live my life because you might find something that resonates um, in it, like for for you to use, yeah. um, you know. Because I know like like or my my perspective is that every single person is different, and they all have like their perfect thing. That they're that they have to offer yep. in this life. Um, I think what's different about me is that I really know it. I really know that I'm like that. I'm completely. I'm, I'm a one of one. Mm -hmm. Just as I know everybody else is a one of one. Mm -hmm. I'm just like hyper aware of it for myself, and I lean into it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and uh, and yeah, and, and so I just kind of that's just how I move move through all of it, right? Um, but like I said, it's like a terrible. It's not a good business plan. But when I'm really when I'm doing it, yeah, it works out. Yes, and, it's I, great. and I wouldn't be able to operate it mm -hmm. any other way. And whenever I whenever I do try, it's just yeah, it doesn't really doesn't really pan out. So so the the feeling of like back in the day of like you know doesn't fit, doesn't fit, push, push, like still doesn't work. To this feeling that you're like vibing right now, you're like all in. You trust it implicit, like yeah, yeah, that yeah. that that change. Yeah. Is it like in a, like what does that feel like? Um does more more so than a change, it feels like a a removage of a blockage. Yeah. A remo removal <laughs> removal of a blockage. Yeah. Um you know, it just feels like a lot of like weight lifted and just kind of like it's just a very natural movement. Yeah. Um you know, so um and and like there's definitely there's definitely times where it's like it get, gets kind of tested. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh shit, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but I notice like as long as I kind of stay stay grounded to it, yep. then it's then it's fine. And, you almost, and it's more than fine. I was just fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um, that that unlock like I feel like some people that can happen to them early, you know, without without trauma or work you know but for you to actually like go through it and then to reach this point like it's a it's not by accident you know it's not like you're an instagram star overnight that just like did something once and like popped off right this was yeah and thank god for that it's not because that seems treacherous i would well, not like wh and why do you say that uh Actually, I was, I was just having a chat with my buddy the other day about this, um, and that kind of happened. That kind of happened with him, where um, he was just he was not prepared for it, mm. and it kind of you know things went wild, and it was just from uh, a sitting position to a hundred miles an hour, yep. and you know it's like when you're going that fast, like things are moving flying by very quickly, mm. and uh, and you don't have it's not gradual enough for you to know like okay, well. This was like this, but when I go over here, this changed a little bit. Yep. And oh, okay, so I see things how I see how things are changing, and okay, I'm kind of reading this stuff, and I can feel what yep. still feels like me in this position. But you know, when you go all the way over here, everything's foreign, mm -hmm. and you're just like, oh shit, mm -hmm. you know. And then that, and then from those heights, when you're not prepared to fall from those heights, yep. you fall hard mm -hmm. for sure, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and. And for me, it's like, because life is just an ebb and flow. So it's like, I'm still always going up and down. Mm -hmm. um, but I just kind of, I have the tools to kind of like be in those down points now where mm -hmm. I go, oh yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, this, this, this is pretty wild right now. Mm -hmm. I got to like kind of hunker down mm -hmm. and kind of just, maybe, maybe I shouldn't do any work right now and I should just do this or blah, blah, blah. I yeah. should, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and because I've definitely like had situations that were like, were like so, um, um, like I don't know, earth shattering. That if I if I wasn't prepared, I would. Have been, oh man, that would have been the end of me mm -hmm. or something. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. The um, the 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 artist struggle. Like it's like a it's a real it's a real thing, right? At, at the point where you're at right now, is it? Do you see like? Are you less worried about that? You know, like the the 
traditional struggles of being an artist and are you okay with, and I'm guessing you are, but just like the path you're on right now feels like you have some. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, um, like I, I don't necessarily think about like the artist struggle anymore. And I think that's kind of what happened to me over COVID was that I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to be able to be in a room full of artists. Mm. Now I'm just like, I'm just trying to be able to be in a room with myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like mm -hmm. that quote, like, oh man, like the world's problems come from a man not being able to sit by himself for five minutes, you know? Um, so if, uh, if you like, that's more of like the, the thing I'm focused on is mm -hmm. just like, okay, what is like, what is life to me? And, you know, not like, what is life as an artist yep. to me? So, uh, I think my approach to like art is, is just that is the same as like my approach to life where I go, oh, okay, do I have something of value to offer into the situation? Oh, cool. I do. Okay, cool. Like, let me see how I, how I can do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I not have any value to offer? Okay, I'm not going to inject myself into the situation. Mm -hmm. And oh, do I know like another person that would be better, would be able to actually be more fitting? Yep. Okay, yeah, definitely put them in there. I'm not going to try to just inject myself so I can yep. take this money and make this about me or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, you know, and, and I and I think when you approach um, approach life and work with where can I add value? then you find yourself in places where you can add value and you can add value in ways that you're like, man, I never even thought mm -hmm. that I could have add this type of value with this like very humble thing that I do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, uh, <clears throat> and I think that it gets kind of like, it gets uh, a little mixed up within like the marketing and building of a business um, where you're, you're trying to like market and like meet this like market's mm -hmm. demands or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And then you're just like, I can be all these things for you, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, but that value isn't going to necessarily like naturally flow through you. And it will be very difficult for you to keep up that act. You know, you can kind of see like a lot of people, they're, they're just like, man, I'm just exhausted from not being myself, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. but when I'm just offering like the value straight for myself, I'm like, man, I'm like, I feel uh, fueled, mm -hmm. like more energized. Mm -hmm. I can have more, e even more to give now. Um it's, I just have to be aware of like, okay, when, when can I offer it? Mm -hmm. And when do I not have something mm -hmm. to offer and just, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, it's really just, yeah, it's just like my, my life is more of like the art. And I would say I, would, I make bits of art yeah. in my life or like, I guess what people understand is art, but generally just like the way I'm living my life is kind of like my actual like piece of art or like my message, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the work you're doing, like the stuff that like the giant things you're doing, um, you know, you touched on it earlier when you're, when you're seeing these mur mirrorless for the first time, they're like, how are they doing this by hand? And, like, and they're telling you they project it. From that moment to like where you are right now and the things that, you know, you've accomplished, the walls and the things you've created, would you have ever seen that transition to this point? Um, so I, I did, um, I did like set a bunch of goals for myself when I was like, I think after I painted like my maybe second mural or something, I was like, I was like, okay, I want to be able to do like a mural of this size. Um, these are my 10 year goals. Um, and the reason why I kind of say like, it seems like I was, um, when I kind of got into art or back into art, that it was always kind of like a track that was moving in the background mm -hmm. and it kind of yanked me along and mm -hmm. kind of went like full, like double speed. It was because like all of like I hit all of my goals within like like a couple of years, and then uh, and then I was like oh, and they also didn't really make me feel that good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, <Surprise>. like <laughs> just like tangible goals. Just like there has to be like something more to it than that, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I mean, all all these things are like if you're like going for a competition, it's like it's kind of you'll there'll, there'll always be more, right? Yeah. And everybody's already done everything anyway. Yeah. Um, but um, but by doing those these projects in like my my own way that's like super aligned with me, mm -hmm. then it's um, it's like such a this beautiful thing. And then when I look at like the scale, then I'm like, man, I can't believe that I took this super intimate thing and made it like that big. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's all these other people benefiting from it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's been super cool. Like the last, um, I mean, a lot of my, my last projects, man, like... You've been on I, a run lately? Um, I took I took somewhat of like a chill year last year. Yeah. Um, but like, but a lot of my, um, a lot of my projects from like last year and kind of like the year before, it was like, I would regularly have like, like uh, interactions with people where they're like just weeping, you know? And I actually, I haven't really chatted with them, um, with other artists about that. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure why, but, um, but that's become like a regular thing. I just like always have conversations with people and they're just like, I'll be up on the lift and I just look down and they're just crying. And I'm like, okay, I got to like, I give them kind of like that moment, mm. um, you know, because I know like some people don't want to cry in front of people, but mm. um, other times like I'll, you know, go down, like hang out with them and stuff. Mm. Like this, this mural, like outside here, um, man, like dozens of people crying under it. No way. Yeah. yeah. Like, how, how does that... Um I feel you're a grounded guy, but that's still got to occupy some brain space, right? Like, how do you handle that? Um, I mean, it's like, it's obviously a, I look at it as like a, like a, a sign of, okay, this was, this was done in, in, uh, in the right way. You know, this is, this is hit its mark. Yeah. Like um, value, like your value prop yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like yep. there, like there's something more to it than just being a painting. Mm -hmm. Um, but it definitely is like a lot, like I have to go home at the end of those days and just go, okay, and just kind of, you yeah, know, I, I can't go right from, right from painting yeah. to like another situation. Yeah. I have to like go home and like kind mm -hmm. of um, unwind and like, yeah. you know, kind of like process all that. Because um, cause sometimes it's like, it's so much that it like, it builds up too much and I got to like... Um, I don't know. All, all of a sudden, I'm just like, man, I feel like I got a whole bunch of stuff that is not mine right now. You know, it's just like intense emotion. Not like, not in a bad way. No. It's just like a lot that's like, I gotta be like, whoa. It's heavy. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, but it's like such a beautiful thing. That I'm I like, can't, oh, man. Yeah. can't imagine. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had some experiences in the show where, you know, who I'm talking to, they, you know, they're, they're in tears in front of me. Yeah. And I feel the, like, that idea of just, not being able to go do something after, I feel the exact same yeah. way because yeah. it's just like it's an exchange in energy, right? Yeah, and yeah. and and that can, you know, you can't go do something. You yeah, think you have to like you have to sit with it and experience it and then manage it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a guy uh, uh, when I was when I was painting this wall and and the and the the mural is of my my buddy and his daughter, and. Uh, and I'm like taking like a like a little like water break and I'm like down on the ground and um and there's this guy like I see him in like the corner of the parking lot and he's just and he's just staring up at the wall and he's like and I look over at him and I'm like oh hey man how's it going and then when he kind of turns like I see like yeah, he's just like face full of tears and stuff and um and so I'm like okay well I'll just like kind of stand here in silence with him like mm. you know if he wants to, if he wants to talk or, or whatever but like this is kind of his moment mm. um and he's like, oh man, he's like, I haven't seen my daughter in like 10 years. Um, he's like, and the last time I saw her, she was this age. And I was like, oh man. I was like, you know, I'm kind of just, you know, I just like kind of listened to him. And then, uh, so I was like, oh man, I was like, this is such a heavy moment. I just like start crying there with him, right? Mm -hmm. So me and him are both just standing there like <laughs> crying, right? And then he goes, he's like, man, I, I used to draw as well. And I was like, oh, well, you know, look at the, like, art is a beautiful way to process all this stuff, man. Um, and the good thing about it is that it's always there. Like, you can always go back to it. And, it's, you know, it's like, it can be such a personal thing, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we just keep looking at the wall. And then eventually he just kind of, like, gets on his bike and just, like, rides away. Um, and I was like, wow, that was, like, that was a really cool moment. Mm -hmm. um, and then my other buddy rolls up, and this guy's just so checked out. <laughs> He's like, oh, yo, what's up, man? Just, and I'm like, wiping just, my eyes. I'm like, damn, bro. I'm like, I was just crying with that guy over there. And he's like, oh, weird, man. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I just like laugh. And I was just like, what a perfect, it's like so perfect yeah. that it's like the yin and yang of yeah, all of like sure. the balance of like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you... You know, th those experiences are, like, special, unique. You know, they're way, way different. 
do you go now when you have a project? Do any of those expectations that creep in your head of like, you know, I wonder if this is going to connect with somebody? Yeah, naturally, like that thought, um, that thought like comes through, and it's like, uh, you know, oh yeah, okay, I wonder, I wonder if this one provides like the opportunity for like something like that, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, but so so when I was in Jasper last year, um, and I and I just come back from like a trip in South America. Um, and like, while I'm on the flight back, like they offer me the, like, they're like, Hey, look, you know, we'd love to invite you officially to, to paint in our festival. Um, you know, um, here's some walls and blah, 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 blah. So I tell them like, Hey, like I'm back and like, I'm like, I'm on my way back right now. What if I come up there in like a couple of weeks, um, just for like three days. And I just see like, I just hang out with you guys and just see like, what Jasper is like for like people in the community, you know, not necessarily like a tourist coming mm -hmm. through and, mm. um, and, uh, and so, so I drive up there and, uh, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, we were just fully open. I'm not like, I'm not prescribing no bear, no goat, no, like whatever, like to Jasper, I'm just going to learn like what it, like, what the community is about, um, mm. you know, um, and it will just be like a reflection of the, them back on themselves. And so I'm just going up there like unbiased. And I'm like walking around there, like hanging out with them. And they're like, yeah, man, it's so, like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, like, you know, naturally I'm like anticipating I'm going to be up in the mountains, mountain climbing and shit, <laughs> you know, like just, I'm like, oh yeah, it's Jasper. It's just what, what goes on there. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but we're just uh, hanging out and, uh, like, no, I'm not really having any ideas that come through. Uh, and then, uh, and then eventually we were on like the last day that I'm there. And every night at the end of the day, I'm like going back, I'm going back to my hotel room and I'm like getting like kind of nervous. I'm like, man, nothing came through today. Nothing came through today. That's a problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, it's okay. It, it, all, all it takes is like a moment. For something to come through so i'm like okay like just you know have faith be hyper present and just be hyper open and just you know just trust and then so we're kind of walking around like the last day um and uh and one of the organizers he's like showing me this wall and he's like oh yeah so like this wall um is uh he's like here's one of the walls like we have for the the festival we're just not sure how we'd paint it because it kind of goes out onto this lawn here um, and this woman lives here in this house. This is actually the last residential house, uh, in downtown Jasper. Um, you know, and like the lady that lives here is like 98 years old or something like that. Um, and I was like, whoa, like that sounds pretty cool. You know? So it was like, she starts kind of like bouncing around in my head mm -hmm. a bit. Right. And then, um, and then like the next morning of breakfast before I leave, I'm just kind of having a conversation with them like, yeah, you know, like maybe we find somebody who like stands out in the community that kind of um, uh, just captures, you know, the community spirit of, of, of Jasper, um, you know, like the woman that lives here and has refused to move and just, you know, um, and they're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. I'm like, yeah, would, would you be able to like get in contact with them and, you know, maybe we can like set up a meeting or something? Um, and they're like, yeah, okay. So, and I don't, I don't really have high hopes for that. It seems like this is perfect, mm -hmm. but I mean, to cold call, mm -hmm. you know, uh, some senior lady, mm -hmm. usually they're like, I don't want, I, yeah. I don't want that kind of attention mm -hmm. on myself or, yeah. um, you know, it just seems like too, too far out there. It's an easy no for them. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but they set up like a phone call. And I get to have a chat with her on Zoom when I'm back in back in Calgary, um, and uh, yeah, we talk for like 45 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, like, would you be cool with uh, having your portrait painted? Um, and she was like, yeah, that would be like a great honor. So I, you know, I kind of like gauged like, okay, what would be like a color that I think is like fitting based on like the what I was picking up on like when we were talking. Mm -hmm. Um, and that would also complement like the area and like mm -hmm. make sense and, you know, in, in the winter and in the summer. And, uh, so I just buy all this paint and, um, and then I just drive up there and I drive up there for a, for a tea date with her essentially and, uh, hang out with her. And I'm just like kind of snapping photos, like not trying to get like great photos, yeah. 
I'm just more trying to like listen to like, okay, like what does she have to say and yeah. blah, 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 you know, like, a, like just um, be as present as I can while still capturing some stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, then it was just like one of those photos and I ended up painting it like a few days later. Mm. Um, and it was just the, the response out of that was like amazing because I'd be painting the wall and somebody would come up and go, hey, is that Della? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's Della. Man, I haven't seen Della in in like 30 years, man. I moved out of here and I just got back today. And like, man, uh, does she still live over there? I'm like, yeah, she lives over there. He's like, oh man, okay, I'm going to go over there right now. And it kind of like, mm. um, it didn't co like connect the community because yep. it was like already so connected. Yep. It just kind of brought that connection all back to light, mm. you know, and, and, and everybody was, you know, kind of realizing, oh yeah, right. Like, oh, my, my uncle used to work with her or her husband and blah, blah, blah. You know, it was just so, it was, I mean, I was just I, like, when I look at that project, I was just kind of like a facilitator. Yeah, it was just, just like, you know, like I, like I heard uh, uh, Paul Hardy say that he was just kind of like a steward for mm -hmm. his, uh, like uh, his projects or, or like his creations. Yeah. And that's what I felt like. I was just like kind of there to be like, yeah, hey. <laughs> Do you know what you have? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and like, that's kind of what I said to them, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is like very special. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I, like, like after that, then it was, like that was like so much emotion. I like come back to Cal and go, whoa, <laughs> okay. You know, cause it was just like so beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but but to be able to just have that trust and be yep. like, hey, like, like, you know, I'm fully present, I'm fully open. Yep. And there's dope shit going on yep. around all of us all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just whether or not you can pay attention to it and, and, and notice it, right? Yep. So, um, so it's really like that about like living life too, right? Mm -hmm. Just like be open, be present, mm -hmm. and just see all this like great stuff. Yep. Um, and there'll always be something, you know, like if, if you just got to be really, really open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's a very, uh, I don't know, man, like a spiritual way to kind of work through your craft. Yeah, it's 100% like a spiritual thing. And, and I think I'm, when I reflect on it, um, I used to think I was building a career yep. so I could be like an artist and, and you know, um, and fulfill my, um, I don't know, this, this uh, calling to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And now I look at it more like I have this opportunity to be an artist because it allows for me such a full life that I wouldn't be able to have, I wouldn't be able to explore all these things if I wasn't, if I wasn't self-employed as an artist. Yep with like the ability to just explore and just kind of, yeah. you know, run around, which is like such a great privilege. Obviously mm -hmm. it's not like, I'm not like everybody needs to be going yeah. to do this. It's just yeah. like, this was just like really afforded to me to be mm -hmm. able to do it. And I'm, you know, and I'm so, so grateful. So it's amazing. Um, I completely understand why Reese was very quick to <laughs> recommend you and, and how he, uh, you know, when I had him on the show, he talked about you a couple of times, you know, he, yeah. I feel like you're, uh, inspiring him and I'm sure it's other people, but this is, uh, it's cool to hear, you know, get some insight into why you do what you do. So this, yeah. is, this has been a cool no, one, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I end the show with one question. When I say Calgary, where does your head go? Um, man, I mean, um, I feel like it's, uh, it's Calgary is just kind of like what you, what you make it, right? It's like, it's such a it's such fertile ground to do whatever you want, um, you know, and a large part of me is uh, Calgary's home for me. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Amazing. The place of possibilities. So, yeah. Agreed. Um, thanks for doing this. Ah, man, thanks for having me. Dude, I'm going to just like, next time you're doing your thing, I'm going to come creeping. Cause oh, definitely, I, man. I, like, Please do, yeah. It's, yeah, I've, I've seen, um, I told you earlier, I saw Brunning, Brunning painted this one in Kensington behind this building. And I went and, uh, watched and do it for an afternoon. And I was just, yeah. It's a, it's a cool experience to to see a true artist do their thing. Yeah. And, it's kind of like a dance yes. for sure. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Uh, thanks again. Thank you. Cool meeting you. Obviously. Oh, likewise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.